This lecture will clarify how crucial the principles of design are in the creation of successful works for art and design. Principles concern soundness of the entire piece, of work, of art, of uh, design in general. These principles should be in order to complete a fundamentally sound work. You may manipulate the principles to push impact. You can saturate color for a more emotional expression. An example might be a warm color introduction, like really pushing the golden glow of sunset to evoke a peaceful feeling in the viewer. Imagine being at the beach at sunset and you're there with your friend and the light is uh, so beautiful and warm from the sun that it makes everything look better. <laughs> you might also upset the comfort level for the viewer in a horror movie poster for, by turning the compositional space on an angle, upsetting the balance. And you've seen this a number of times. They do it in cinema as well. You turn things on an angle so people start to sense a, a, an uneasy, uncomfortable feeling. And generally that's when you know that the bad stuff is going to happen. Another instance might be to use pale, cold colors to evoke sadness, depression, and literally cold temperature depicting a cold stormy night, for instance. There are definitely formulas that are being used for this stuff, especially in uh, movie posters. You'll notice that there's this trend towards a dingy, dirty green and a disgusting mustard yellow in addition to the standard blue with tints and shades to depict an overall cold composition. The four principles you need to concern yourself with, and I'm going to be uh, perfectly clear here, balance, emphasis, rhythm, and unity are the four principles that I like to teach because they're fundamental to every book I've ever read on the subject. There are a few here and there that will write a book and they will add an additional one or they'll rename one of these but you're in good shape if you know these four principles. Just understand that in order for your work to sell or your work to be comfortably viewed and uh, and you can design it so that it's a positive experience, comfortable, positive, fundamental experience, you need to achieve balance, emphasis, rhythm, and unity within that piece of work, whether it be industrial design, the shape of a car, uh, the interior of a car, a painting, a movie poster, uh, a sculpture. Now, how do you get that to happen? So let's just say you've got issues with these principles. You go down to the elements of design, which represent the tools required to achieve principle soundness. And we're going to cover that in a moment. So the image below by illustrator N.C. Wyeth, October 22nd. He was born in 1882, October 19th, 1945. He died. It's a very sad story. This guy was Definitely top five American illustrators in history. Um, represents the intended image. Okay. So the illustrate the, the photograph or the illustration that we have just below this type is going to be how his painting looks currently. It was done, it was commissioned by a school um, in Pennsylvania, and he is from the Brandywine School. And what's really great about this is that he would paint out in the country and students from this art school knew of him and one student befriended him would go and seek him out in the forest and this kid was apparently very uh, gifted and had, he was an exceptional artist and then suddenly uh, Wyeth realized that the person wasn't showing up anymore and he went to go and inquire as to what was going on at the school and they told him that he'd unexpectedly just suddenly passed away. And so the school was very depressed and upset about the whole thing. And they commissioned Wyeth to paint the current paint, the painting that I'm about to show you in their uh, cafeteria, I believe is where it's located. So if you look on the top two corners, you're going to see little black arches. It's because it's painted into an arch and it's still there today. And I think it might be my favorite piece of work of all time. So this is the giant. And what it's depicting is little kids looking up and their imagination, they haven't lost it yet. <laughs> you get older, and as you get older, you tend to rationalize things away, or you're preoccupied, and you miss the small miracles that are right in front of you. So this is, I think, what everybody's done at one point or another, and I know I used to, is lie down on the grass and look up at the clouds and try to see what shapes present themselves. And uh, that's what's going on here. So if you notice, 
the little kids are sitting here at the beach having a good time, and then they look up and they see this giant walking in the clouds. We enter a composition from the left-hand side, and we flow down in the zigzag, and we usually end up on the right-hand lower corner. That's like an advertising. You usually have the photograph, you'll have a tagline or some sort of a, a quote or some sort of a copy here, and you end up with a logo and some sort of a call to action in the form of a website down on the lower right hand side before exiting the page. In this instance, this is just a painting that is meant to communicate without type. So the fact that we come left to right, down, the legs are pretty much creating a beautiful triangle which is a very uh, fundamentally sound piece for stability. You can see it in so many works of art, it's very fundamental but it also directs the eyes right to the kids and encapsulates the kids. Uh, let's see. So balance, we have an asymmetrical balance. Um, I often like to point this out. You've got the seagulls on this side and you've got the stormy little, well, it's not stormy, but the wave break over here. And we'll see how that is crucial down the road. But balance is here through an asymmetry because you can split this side and this side and they're roughly the same. So that's kind of a mirror image, therefore symmetry. Um, emphasis, it's, I would say it's clearly on the giant because you go and you see the giant, the giant is emphasized. Now, how, how can you verify that? You need to defend it. I would defend it by saying, uh, calling on the elements of design. I would say size is constituting why he's considered the emphasis focal point because he does take up about 80% of the real estate here. And then you come down and then the kids direct you back up to him again, which is done through what? Line. Because they're looking at him, that psychic line, we studied that, psychic line is the subcategory under line. We also have implied line because we have similar shapes. We also have an alternating rhythm because you see the taupe beige color here, here, and it's like, Beige color, skip, beige color, skip, beige color, and then off the page. Alternating rhythm, or implied line as well here, because it's taking your eye and it's directing you in. Um, we could go on and on. We'll go, let's do it. Let's go on to the next thing. So now you can see that I have manipulated value on this, and I don't know that it's bad, it's different. Okay, if you look at this one, you can ask yourself, which do you prefer? This is a more subtle statement with more detail, and the color that they're using is derivative of all this, and the fact that you're getting a softening is implying um, the subcategory of value, an atmospheric perspective, which is what you see naturally every day when you see uh, impurities in the air, whether it be fog or smog or haze or fire smoke. So this one, is where you push a shadow and you make it more uh, stark in terms of the overall shape is emphasized more. So this isn't wrong, it's just a different interpretation. You decide which you think is better for your desired outcome. Okay, on this one, you look at this one and what's different? The seagulls are missing. So now this wave right here is actually kind of causing this little girl to be emphasized because she's surrounded by this big white area. It might be a little bit of a distraction and the balance might be a little bit upset. So do you notice the seagulls being there and the wave being there are important to keep the balance? Okay, we move on to this one. And what is different about this one? This one, you're missing the ocean, or the little puddle of water that's behind them that's mirroring what's going on in the sky, which is also rhythmic in, in nature. You're getting all these beautiful colors here, and then you get a warm area that's kind of like a stage, and then you go back to those cold colors again, so you're getting uh, a rhythm that's kind of like a boom. It's boom. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys understand what I meant by that little sound <laughs> debacle right there. Okay, so you can see what happens. You get this upper hemisphere, you get this lower hemisphere. You don't get a rhythm that alternates because you don't have any of this color down here. That's pretty exceptional right there. What's different in this one? 
Well, if you notice, his hat right here is turned red. Right here, being white, it also helps to get that rhythm of white to jump across the page, to flow. Again, linear, alternate, or it's not alternating, it's an implied line through just the use of color, white, to skip through. I mean, see how important that color is right there? You skip through and you leave the page. And if you notice, it's getting darker around the contour, around the edge of the composition here. This is what they want you to focus on right here. So it's a beautiful piece. Six. So when they turn the head or the hat red, you can see this is what you would call, I, I always tell my students, you need a uh, rule of odds to be incorporated here. If she had like a red sash around her waist, that would help to get this to flow. But the fact that you only have two, instead of you getting a beginning, a middle, and an end, you get a visual ping pong match. That's what I call this. And your eye just keeps going back and forth. It doesn't flow through. Okay. What's different about this one? We've created a graphic shape over the little boy right here. And as a result, he's emphasized through isolation emphasis. Okay, this is not something that we wanted to do. This might be something your client demands you to do because that's their son and they really want him to be the focus. <laughs> so that's uh, important. So let's see, so far we've covered balance. We've talked about emphasis based on size. Emphasis in this time, or in this instance, is based on color and shape. Um, let's talk about unity real quick. Unity is achieved with this whole thing based on, I would say, shape, because of the human the figures, shape of the clouds, and color. Color and shape are the unifying factors that are primary in this instance. Okay, moving along. So again, what's upset here? Emphasis is upset here. How do you fix it? You change the color back. That's how we do this. So. Moving on to number eight. What element or what principle of design is upset in this one? It's balance because now you've seen the space has been manipulated. He's been pushed to the left and it just doesn't feel right. It's not comfortable to look at anymore. So we need to manipulate the shape or the space by pushing the shape to the right and having him become that standard stabilizing force that was there prior. Now this is an extreme exaggeration. Let's just say that uh, he had too many beets for dinner last night. He woke up and now he's toned a purplish red. That would be a problem for this, uh, pro for this particular piece because again, emphasis is upset through what? Through color. So do you get what we're doing here? You're gonna sit here, you evaluate anything that you look at. You can see, I like that piece and you're all, what is it about it that makes me find it you know, nice to look at? What's beautiful about it? And you can determine, well, I like it because they really do a good job with the chrome accents all over the car. Chrome would be an example of a texture because it reflects whatever's around it. But it's also the fact that it's probably a high value, which is kind of like a flickering light that takes your eye through the composition of the car shape through um, value white and black. You might like the overall shape of the car. You'll know, oh, it's the shape that's got me going here. Moving along. What's upsetting this one? Same thing. Emphasis is upset because this is the only occurrence of this linear indication. So line is the problem here. You gotta go back to figurative, meaning you gotta paint it to look more realistic and in tune with these guys. Unless, of course, this is a monster movie where this is the interdimensional man that comes into our dimension and he becomes this is where he's breaking in uh, before he becomes figurative and normal okay this one is value has been upset so they're looking up at something and it's a lot more subtle to look at it's difficult um, I might say you know it depends on if you want this to be ethereal or if you want it to have more emphasis, like in the very first one right here, you can see the difference. This one, emphasis through size has been manipulated. You've got all this space up here. Not only that, but then look at this. 
you break this into thirds. There's the top third, here's the middle third, and then the lower third. And that's not, and that's a missed opportunity. A giant should be really big, and you want to make sure that he takes up that space nicely. And lastly, his club's missing. So now you've got a balance issue because he's leaning forward, and there's nothing there as a counterbalance. And so that's upsetting, and it makes you look at it and think, what happened? Somebody might have done this in a real situation. Mistakes have happened where people will go and Photoshop stuff, not know what something is, get rid of it, and then they compromise the entire uh, foundational structure of a piece. So again, the task is to look at these pictures, and you want to practice this. You look at these things, and you say, okay, does it have balance? Yes. What, are the bal what is causing balance to happen? Balance is occurring through shape and color. You have white on this side, you have the same tone of white on this side. You have white here, you have white here. Balance through color and shape. Um, emphasis. We have emphasis with the giant based on size. You could also make the argument that there's emphasis on the kids because there's more detail in them, which is the element of texture. They're more detailed uh, and value is indicating them clearer. So you'd say value and texture. Balance, emphasis, rhythm is achieved because you go and you are alternating through these colors all over the place. It's like a song that's got a constant drum beat, just like this, the taupe and the white, the taupe and the white, the taupe and the white, off the page. And lastly, <clears throat> unity, and I would definitely say unity is achieved through color use and the figures being humanoid in shape. That's all there is to it. Practice.